What is going on guys? Welcome to another 10 day guitar challenge where we're looking at how to learn lead guitar. Now we're looking at this on electric guitar but a lot of this will work on acoustic guitar as well. The only thing that can be more difficult on acoustic guitar is string bending and also we want to be using an amplifier and things like that to get the most out of this course. I want to make this as accessible as possible but this is not intended for total beginners. This is intended for people that have been playing guitar at least a few months and have a good amount of chord based songs learnt but are perhaps totally new to the world of lead guitar and even playing single strings. To enable us to learn a new song every day we're only going to be looking at a very short lead part but this is going to be the main part of the song, the most recognisable part. I'm going to be using a looper pedal and um, playing the chords to this so that we can play lead guitar over this with the intention of training you to play along to the original recordings as soon as you're ready. For the videos in this series I'm going to be using my Epiphone Les Paul and a Fender Stratocaster. This is a Mexican uh, made Fender Stratocaster. So I'm using these two guitars because they're possibly the most well used and most common guitars that you'll find for beginners, intermediate players and just throughout the world really. And I will also be using a Boss Katana 100 amplifier and I'll be making the amp settings that I use available and all the amplifier controls on a Boss Katana are pretty common throughout most amplifiers you'll find, especially ones that model different amplifiers and also different effects like reverb, delay or chorus. With that in mind, for this first video I'm going to have all the amplifier controls set to 12 o'clock so that's EQ, gain and the only one that I've got turned down is volume and that's to kind of prove a point that it's not all about the EQ and the amp settings, we can get a lot of tone actually from our guitar. You'll notice the volume's totally off because I'm actually using the line out from the Boss Katana straight into my recording equipment and that sounds like this. I'm on the bridge pickup so this is selected down to treble which is this one. All volume controls all to full as a default. So let's make a start with this first lead line that we're going to be learning. Boys Don't Cry by The Cure and every song that we're looking at is going to be in the indie alternative genre. The reason being is that there's an abundance of great simple lead lines when we look at this genre specifically. We're going to keep them as well known as possible. I hope you really enjoy these song choices. Let's make a start with song number one. All right, so that lead line that you've just heard me play actually uses something called the A major scale. Now I'm going to show that scale. It's not absolutely essential that you learn this but it does include most of the notes that make up this melody and playing the notes in an order, so low to high, is kind of like learning your ABC before you start talking and kind of you writing sentences and reading sentences because music absolutely is a language. So I will show this briefly just as a bit of background and if you want to do more of this kind of thing, learning the scale and then the lead line would be absolutely the best thing to do. So here's the scale. And then that melody actually starts from the third note of that scale. So one, two, three and then it goes up from there. So to play that melody we need to take your first finger and we're going to place it at the second fret of string two. So fret one, two, string one, two. We're just here. We're then going to use your middle finger and place it just here. Now when we're placing your fingers at a fret, we always want to be at this side of the fret area, the side closest to you. If we're over here, we ha or even in the middle, we have to press down a lot harder and we actually want to press down as light as possible, but so that the note actually rings out. All the stuff that you're doing with open chords absolutely applies here but we need to pay attention to each finger as we place it down. I'm also on this angle so I'm kind of set up like as if I was playing a D chord. Thumb sat on top, not right over, just sat on top and then I'm also slightly gripping here 
like I'm just going in for the handshake for the guitar neck, which puts my fingers on this angle. This angle's super important for the world of indie, rock, blues, lead guitar. Uh, electric guitar stuff, we always want to be on this kind of angle, especially for string bending. When we do string bending later on, this is gonna be essential. But for now, just try and grip the neck like this, and then your first finger like that, and that will be superb. Middle finger next, so we lift off that first finger, middle finger, fret three of string two, and then the next note is the open, thinnest string. We play the first note twice, and that gives us that opening signature part. That happens again. Hopefully this is simple for you, but if you're struggling, keep your right hand picking motion as small as possible, and I also rest kind of the base of my thumb um, on the strings here as well, when I'm playing strings one and two. And as we move to thicker strings, we can keep it on this part of the guitar as well, but for lead guitar stuff, we tend to be on strings one, two, or three, and resting the base of your thumb on those thicker strings around the uh, bridge pickup just here is a really good thing. I'm also holding a pick with my thumb on top and the first finger here. You can hold it like this, but it's much better if we hold a pick like this. That melody again. We're then going to play the rest of the notes from the scale on string one. Open thinnest string, chord playing hand or fretting hand, set up still on this angle, which will enable us to play the second fret of string one with the first finger, fourth fret with the middle finger, fifth fret with the third finger. Now if you struggle with this and you're a real beginner, you can just play all of this with one finger. Everybody's got to start somewhere. Don't let that put you off. But ideally, this angle of our fingers, rather than having to stretch like this, look, I, I can't stretch my third finger to here if my fingers are like this. But on this angle, I can because I'm stretching like this, kind of like, this is why chord playing is so important. I'm doing a very similar stretch here to how I play a C chord, like this. So open, open, Second fret, fourth fret, fifth fret. That gives us... The final part we need to learn just comes down all that same set of notes, but it is a little bit quicker, so this is a little bit more tricky, but here it is. Just those three notes. And then it starts again immediately, and this is the thing with this uh, lead line. It repeats and repeats just like a guitar riff and it is a guitar riff in many ways but because we're on the thinner strings we're essentially playing a lead solo here this is really exciting if this is the first kind of time you've been playing single notes or lead guitar at all so please give this one a go if you need to pause this video and give it a little bit of time that's totally fine one more time nice and slow the full thing and I'll just play it twice so you can see how it loops Now once you can do that, I want you to play along with me 
to a loop of the chords and we're going to start off at 50% speed of the original recording. So this is where we're going to be choosing a BPM and for every song in this series we're going to be doing this kind of thing. We'll then speed it up gradually and you find where you're at so that, you know, after this 10 day challenge you've got a mark and you can come back and practice your favourite songs from this series more and improve them. It's not expected that you need to get everything perfect by day one. In fact, I'm fully aware a lot of you guys prefer to think of these as 10-week courses rather than 10-day courses. Totally fine, you're in control. Let me just show you again that major scale that all these notes come from in this melody, and we can play that up, which is... And we want to learn that first of all going up the scale, but then also going up and back down to get the most benefits. So I've now got the chords to this song in my looper pedal. I'm going to give us a count in. We're at 50% speed, which is 65 BPM. And there's a rhythm to this, so you'll just need to copy what I'm doing. Maybe you'll need to rewind this a couple of times. But when you're ready, grab your guitar and join in with me, playing along to the chords in one, two, three, four. So that was two repetitions and please rewind this video uh, just a few seconds just to do that a few times. Make sure you can play two repetitions in time with that first one before you go for this next one. This uh, one is 90 BPM so we're quite a bit faster but it's not going to feel too much different um, initially as we speed up. It feels a lot different as we get closer to the tempo of the song. That's when we really have to go small by small amounts. But 90 should be totally fine. Join in with me. In one, two, three, four. So hopefully that's something that you can play along to. Remember this does take practice, so you will have to watch that part of the video and play along to it a few times to really get it. You can recreate this same thing yourself. Uh, the chords that I was playing are just an A major, B minor bar chord, C sharp minor and then a D, and then it comes down those same chords again and just down, down, up, up, down. We just repeat that using a looper pedal. I've got a separate video for how to use a looper pedal. I'll leave that in the description. Definitely check that out. And um, this is one that if you want to revisit this song later, you know, over the next few days, you can try and increase that BPM and perhaps eventually try playing along to the original recording, though that is, of course, quite a bit faster as they normally are. Um, what I recommend is trying to play along to that and then get on to day two, where we're going to be looking at a new song, new lead line, 
and uh, looking at some different stuff that's really going to bring your lead guitar playing to life. I hope you really enjoyed this series. Let me know what you think to it in the comments. Give it a like if you like this video and I hope to see you in that next video. Take care of yourselves. I'll see you there.